Hey, my name is Alexandra Martin. I'm an application specialist at Stila. And firstly, I'd like to thank the organizer of the conference for giving us the opportunity to present our system despite the extraordinary pandemic context that we currently face. I also thank you for taking the time to watch this short talk and discover Stila Technologies NICA system for digital PCR. For those of you who may not be familiar with digital PCR, we will start by reviewing its principles and follow the description of the NICA workflow. So digital PCR is the third generation of the well-known polymerase chain reaction, or PCR, a widely adopted technique in the molecular biology toolkit. PCR allows for the detection of targeted nucleic sequences by specifically amplifying them in solution. By following the evolution of an increasing fluorescent signal as PCR occurs, the so-called quantitative version of PCR, qPCR, allows for the quantification of the targeted sequences as well. Although easy to use, qPCR is a relative quantification method as it requires the establishment of cal calibration curve with standard samples of non-concentration. These standards may not amplify with the same efficiency as the sample of interest, which may bias the quantification. By partitioning the PCR reaction mix, digital PCR enables an absolute measurement of target's concentration, overcoming the limitation of qPCR and conferring an increased sensitivity. We will see how in more detail. So in digital PCR, the workflow starts with the same reaction mix as for qPCR, containing the regions necessary for the amplification reaction, the buffer solution, the DNTPs, the polymerase and its cofactors, the primers and probes, and the template under investigation, as represented here by the blue sequence. As mentioned already, the key step in digital PCR is the partitioning of the reaction mix into a large number of small compartments of the same size. In the NICA system, partitioning consists in generating a water and oil emulsion of the mix. As the emulsion is generated, the target sequences are randomly distributed in the droplets, such that some droplets contain one or at least one sequence of interest, and some don't contain any sequence of interest. After partitioning, each droplet acts as an independent reactor, where PCR can occur if the target is initially present. A successful PCR will lead to the generation of a fluorescent signal at the end of the reaction, and the droplet that initially contained the target will have a high fluorescent signal, but the droplet that did not initially contain the target will have a background signal. Plotting the fluorescence intensity of each droplet leads to the so-called dot plot with two clusters separated by a threshold automatically set by the analysis software. Above this threshold, the droplets are considered as positive, and under this threshold, they are considered as negative. The analysis software then uses the proportion of positive droplets and Poisson statistics calculations to estimate the concentration of the target of interest, together with the uncertainty on the measurement. The latter lies in the fact that a positive droplet may contain more than one target sequence initially, and it is dependent on both the concentration of the target in the PCR mix and the number of droplets generated. The unique and patented partitioning technology by contactless fluid injection in the NICA system leads to a self-assembled array of droplets called a droplet crystal. In a droplet crystal, the size of the droplets is fixed and controlled uniquely via the microfluidic design. Ensuring a monodispersed population of droplet size is important in order to guarantee a random distribution of the target sequences within the droplet crystal. The other specificity of the NICA system is that it has three fluorescent channels, allowing for the quantification of three different targets in a unique sample. In this scheme, for example, two variant sequences of genomic DNA can be quantified together with the wild type sequence. In such an experiment, the lowest abundant target in red here is artificially enriched by partitioning, making it less prone to competition as it would be the case in a bulk solution in qPCR. That is why a digital PCR is more sensitive than qPCR to detect rare events. 
Making digital PCR a lab commodity being our mission at Stila, the Nike system is an easy to use and integrated solution. The whole workflow takes no more than two hours and 30 minutes and requires only a few manipulations as we will see in more detail coming up. But first, let's focus on the heart of the innovation, the Sapphire ship, which integrates the droplet crystal technology. It is already pre-filled with oil, thus the only manual step is to load the PCR mix in the chips. With an input volume of 25 microliter of PCR mix, you end up with a droplet crystal between 25,000 to 30,000 droplets of 0.59 nanoliter each. Given this specification, the dynamic range of the Nika system spans five log from a limit of detection at 95% confidence level of 0.2 copies per microliter up to 20,000 copies per microliter. It is possible to, lo up, to load up to four samples per chip. To load the chips with PCR mix, you simply have to open the inlet ports, pipe a 25 microliter of mix on top of the oil already inside, and seal the inlet port with a cap. In terms of compatible chemistries, you can run digital PCR experiments starting from DNA or one-step RT digital PCR experiments starting from RNA. And the system is compatible with Statman probes for fluorescence detection. Once loaded and sealed, up to three sapphire chips, so up to 12 samples, can be placed in the first instrument, the Nika geode, which will perform both the partitioning and the PCR cycling by generating the emulsion and then heating and cooling the droplet crystals following the PCR program defined by the user. At the end of the PCR reaction, you simply need to switch the chips from the geode to the second instrument, the Nika Prism 3, which will read the endpoint fluorescent signal of each crystal in the three channels. Thanks to the droplet forming a crystal, one picture is enough to catch the signal of every droplet, allowing a fast scanning time of about 50 seconds per sample. When multiplexing with Statman probes, custom probe combination can be chosen as long as they match the wavelengths displayed here. The main fluorophores used in molecular biology are compatible with the system. After scanning, data visualization and analysis is performed by the Crystal Miner software. It has been completely developed in-house and allows a guided and intuitive analysis of the data for an in-depth understanding of the results, as well as a robust and reliable quality control. That includes, amongst other features, the Explore Crystal feature, where the dot plot data is presented alongside the associated droplet crystal image and allows you to visualize every single dot and its corresponding droplet in the crystal. Crystal Miner is available with no limitation on seats or licensing fees and can be downloaded together with demo data via Stila Technologies website. So to sum up, the Nika system workflow allows you to get results in two hours and 30 minutes with a minimum end on time. The integration of the whole workflow within the Sapphire chip makes it very robust against contamination and very easy to use. When doing fundamental research, you may need to further analyze the products of amplification. Another advantage of the Nika system is the possibility to recover the amplicons generated in an easy way. By placing the sapphire chips back in the Nika geode and running a DDK feed program, it is possible to channel the emulsion into the outlet ports and pipette them out. A standard chloroform extraction protocol breaks the emulsion and the DNA can be extracted with an excellent yield for further analysis. The Nika system is of course compatible with many sample types to address a wide range of applications. Advantages of this easy to perform digital PCR workflow will benefit your analysis for absolute quantification of DNA or RNA, copy number variation assessment, rare event detection or gene expression analysis. If you want to know more about specific applications, I invite you to visit our application and technical notes on our website. The latest one, describing the assay developed by our Chinese distributor for COVID-19, 
is uh, detailed. If you'd like to learn more about crystal digital PCR principles and application, you can also visit our online learning center at www.gene-pi.com. Finally, if digital PCR is of interest for your research, we would be happy to welcome you, when traveling will be safe again, of course, to our demo lab in Paris for a day of theoretical and hands-on training with your own samples. Thank you for your time. We're happy to answer your question on Slack. Enjoy the rest of the conference and stay safe.